Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of the HMH Agile Institute podcast. I'm Beth Gregg, and today I'll be your host. We'll be hearing today from Erin Glanz, our manager of quality operations, about sprints. Um, But before we do, I'll take a minute to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm the system director for infection prevention, a pediatric nurse by background, and most importantly, mother to my six-year-old Matthew. I'm driven by care with integrity and inspired by a vision of healthcare without harm. I learned early in my career as a pediatric nurse in a regional trauma center that healthcare could be better. When I responded to my first trauma for a nine-year-old little boy struck by a drunk driver, I held his airway alongside my preceptor at the time who was doing chest compressions. When the code was called, I remember sitting alone in the trauma bay next to his grandmother in complete shock. Healthcare can be better. Working with colleagues in quality and infection prevention allows me to remain closely connected to my purpose of co-designing a healthcare system we can all trust by leveraging an agile mindset to ensure the psychological safety for us to share and receive open and honest feedback to keep getting better at HMH and beyond. With that, I'll turn it over to our guest, Erin Glanz. Many of you may know her from her work with Human Resources. She has also spearheaded our administrative fellowship program for MHA graduates. Erin co-chairs the Young Professionals Team Member Resource Group, and she's also a fellow for Lead NJ a group of leaders across the state from a variety of sectors who come together through shared learning to improve communities in New Jersey and beyond. Erin, welcome to our podcast. We're excited to talk to you about sprints, but first, maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Beth. Um, Your story was beautiful. It actually gave me chills. Um, But yeah, so hi, everyone. I'm super excited to be here. My name is Erin Glantz, as Beth mentioned. Um, And I'm really driven uh, to enhance patient care. You know, I want to make sure that every patient we serve has a very meaningful healing and personalized experience. Um, I was actually raised around the healthcare environment. Um, My mom is a nurse by background, um, so I can remember being at the hospital as a very small child, just kind of wandering around my mom's office. And I remember also, you know, having critical... Um, things happen in my family, right? Um, My dad, uh, he is a cancer survivor at this point. Um, God bless. Um, But I also had a cousin who um, unfortunately is a state trooper and got hit um, in in a line of duty um, and was ejected from a car and is now a quadriplegic. And what I think about those experiences and having, you know, a mother who's a nurse and working in healthcare and having that person that could care for these individuals and be that, that side arm, Um, I realized, you know, similar to Beth, we can do better, right? We can do better. None of those experiences for my dad or my cousin were meaningful. They were not personalized and they certainly were not always healing. Um, So with that, I'm really excited to be here and again on this podcast as an agile change agent and as somebody who is looking to just make this place better for everybody else. Thank you, Erin, for sharing your very inspiring story with us today. I think some of what we've been doing through Agile might be what's missing, as it accounts for the complexities associated with the humans on the other end. You mentioned a care that wasn't always healing, not always tailored, and so making sure that we have processes in place to assure that that happens for our patients and each other will be integral. Sprint has become a popular word around the organization. Can you tell us a little bit about what a sprint really is? It has been a word that's on the top of everybody's mind. And I do think that there's opportunity to clarify. So a sprint in the very literal sense is just time and space. It's really an iterative process of working towards to solving a problem. Um, So there's a lot of different sprints that you can run. The sprints that we're really gonna focus on today involve co-design sprints and really with an innovation form style. So can you tell us a little bit more about how you've begun to integrate sprints and agile methodology into your work with the clinical and administrative sprints over the past year? 
I began working with uh, Jose Azar, who is our Chief Quality Officer. Um, and it was during my administrative fellowship, actually, um, where I kind of got, heard this uh, care model redesign, per se. Um, and when I got uh, mounted and kind of put into these meetings, it became to be very apparent to me that where this stems from was our executive leadership and our leaders throughout our network really saw that there was an opportunity to have the clinician voice at the forefront. That's where it stemmed for, honestly. So they wanted to bring the clinician's voice forward. Um, they wanted to adopt sprints into the practice, uh, which kind of began that journey. Um, so our first phase of sprints were clinical and major. Um, so we invited the 11 service lines. Um, we had representation from every single region. Um, so all in all, it was around, I believe, 55 physicians in total. Um, and we brought them together, broke it down by service line, had support from different areas such as patient safety and quality. We had strategy, business development at the table. Um, we had the CTSs, so our operation leaders at the table as well. But again, I want to emphasize the fact that this was really clinically driven. Um, so what we did was we spent time and space with each of the um, service lines. So about two days each, around eight hours. And I know what you're thinking, getting physicians in a room for eight hours together, that seems insane. Um, but we did do it and it did expedite what we were trying to accomplish, which was really around creating those clinical, minimal, viable, essential capabilities that we need to see or that HMH wanted to commit to seeing um, at that community level, tertiary level, and then also quaternary level. Um, so in that process, it was really, again, bringing those physicians together to identify what do we need to see in place in order to deliver the highest quality, safest care. Um, and at the end of those sessions, what we were left with was certain specifications in terms of those minimal viable essential criterias um, that were then rolled out to the rest of the um, organization to start working through and kind of identify where we're at in this journey and where we can be doing better for our patients and where we have those opportunities. Wow, very impressive, Erin. And to get that number of physicians and colleagues in the room for that amount of time, I think certainly confirms their demand and um, the time that they gave you to co-design a solution that they felt would work for them and making sure that their voices were heard in the design rather than an approach with leading with a solution and wondering why the solution that was created by people not included on the other end might not work. So congratulations on your work with that. You shared your experience with clinical sprints, and we heard a lot about the importance of getting time and space from the stakeholders to co-design a solution that will work for them. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience with administrative sprints? How do they look different? So I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, upon conclusion of those clinical sprints, again, we were left with those minimal viable essential capabilities, right? Those very specific things that the clinicians deemed essential for patient care in this particular po their particular population. Um, upon completion, we had this nice long list of capabilities, right? And what we did with those capabilities is we really sent them back to the regions, right? We sent them back to the operational leaders and then they worked with their team to basically fill in a gap analysis where they went line by line, spec by spec to see, do we meet it? Do we not meet it? Are we kind of meeting it? Do we need to do more work here? Are there opportunities? Um, was the way I would define that gap analysis. Um, the gap analysis definitely taught a lot, and I was just I was amazed by the way that the teams really came together um, to fill this out, to be honest, and to to see where we can be doing better for our patients. From there, um, the administrative side felt like you know what this was a really great experience on the clinical end. We'd love to do the exact same thing on the administrative side with really a focus on four different lenses. So to take these, these specs that we created and how do we materialize it into minimal viable plans, right? Things that we can act on. So we took them through four different areas of consideration, which was market share, workforce, operations, and financial considerations. Um, so again, a very similar situation where we had time and space. We had all stakeholders at the table from an operations lens, whether that be CTS, whether that be the hospital site specifically. And then in addition to that, we had those clinicians at the table yet again, along with patient safety and quality, physician enterprise, and uh, 
strategy business development. Um, so on the conclusion of those sprints, we were really left with minimal viable plans on how to close and address these gaps that we identified through the clinical sprints and then the gap analysis. So it sounds like your clinical sprints involved clinicians as your stakeholders who confirmed their demand by giving you eight hours of their time to come together and co-design minimal viable solution to improve the patient experience in our hospitals. And the administrative sprints focused on how our teams could come together to operationalize those into minimally viable plans that are more actionable. Absolutely. And you also had the opportunity to share your work through these sprints at the Greater New York Hospital Association recently. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Can you share with us your experience there? Yeah, so um, the Greater New York Hospital Association, um, all of the CQOs within the tri-state area come together, from what I understand, quarterly. Um, to really talk through what's going on in the arena of patient safety and quality, talk through what the different hospital sites are seeing, what they're working on. Um, And we actually um, had the meeting up at Hackensack, um, which was an amazing experience. We actually ended up touring the beautiful campus. um, So it was really fantastic. But during that time, I really took the um, others through this journey, um, letting them know just about how we brought these clinicians together, how the clinical voice is um, you know, at HMH from the executive level down, you know, we're really trying to pull that out um, and make sure that that's a driving force to anything that we're doing strategically. Um, and it was interesting because I think that they were all really like wowed by that, right? You know, um, and I didn't find it super surprising just from the standpoint of how innovative and on the forefront that Hackensack Marine has been. Um, but to kind of see that from the outside lens to say, you know, we are doing something that really not a lot of places are doing. It was really amazing experience. For those of you who are interested in learning more about sprints, Erin also co-authored a publication entitled Using Agile Science for Rapid Innovation and Implementation of a New Care Model. We'll drop that link below for all of you to check out if you're interested. We talked about a lot today, including the importance of using stories to add meaning, as well as engaging stakeholders in a co-design of solutions that work for them. And you also talked about opportunities to operationalize those minimal viable solutions into plans that are more actionable through your administrative sprints. We touched on demand, the amount of time, money, effort, energy, your stakeholder is committing to helping you solve a problem. And we look forward to talking more about some of these concepts in our future episodes of the Agile Institute podcast. Thank you all for tuning in today. Um, It was a pleasure talking with you today, Erin. Congratulations on all of your great work. I'm looking forward to what 2024 has in store for all of us. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it as well.